We are picking up where we left off last week. We had some issues with our first section of rammed earth floors, so follow along to see how we fixed it and what we learned. In the next 27 minutes, we are going to fix our mistake and show the process and completion of the entire bottom layer of our rammed earth floor. If you haven't joined us before, we are Red and April off-grid, and we are building a completely DIY off-grid home in the Arizona desert. So, we're just going to have to, oh man, yeah, this, just nothing there, you know. So some of it's quite good, but a lot of it's not. Through that whole side, huh? Yeah. When we came out this morning to look things over, we realized that that section that we had re-wet and compacted yesterday had not improved at all. In fact, when we really got to digging into it, we realized that it was very soft and actually very sandy, just like loose soil. It hadn't compacted at all, and that's when we realized we were going to have to tear part of it out. So we're really going to have to replace a lot of the work that we did on the very first day. So the first batch was okay, the last batch was okay. But the ones that we did in between those were really iffy. And so we're just going through and removing the soil that we have to just by feel. We're leaving what's hard and taking out what's soft. And so it ended up being quite a good sized area here that we're going to need to redo. On the bright side, the second half of the room that we did on the second day all looks good. It's all nice and firm. We like how it turned out. And all we did was add more moisture. So we know or we feel like that we can just replace this section with the same mixture, just with more moisture and it ought to work out fine. So that's what we're doing here. It ended up being four or five batches. I do hate doing rework, but it could have been a lot worse. It could have been the whole room. So this is just four or five batches, won't take too long, and then we'll be ready to get started on the guest room. So we're using pretty much the same ratio here, just more water than we did on the first day. We are actually using a little bit of the material that we pulled out instead of sand, because we the stuff we pulled out seemed really sandy. And so we decided to just go ahead and reuse it in place of sand. And here we are bringing in the last load to patch up this little bit on the floor. Fortunately, it was just the batches that we had did on that first day that were too dry. Everything we did on the second day seems really good. So I think we'll be all right here. Next, we decided to move on to the guest bedroom, which is on the other side of the house. So first thing was to prep the floors, put in all those layers and get it all ready. And then we needed to build a ramp to get over to it. And so here we are bringing in a load. This I think is probably about the fifth load. So we're just getting going on this room. Well, now that we have the moisture content figured out, this seems to be working out really well and compacting very nicely. I might mention that this is a rammed earth concept here and we haven't really seen other people doing it exactly this way you know we're adding concrete to the mix and we are compacting it while it's not you know completely muddy it's it's definitely wet and compacts down nicely but it's not muddy most of the other people that we've seen do a base layer like this have got it very wet muddy and then also you know put some kind of a fiber in it like straw in order to give it strength and so what we're doing here is pretty different and kind of experimental we're not sure that it'll work or we weren't sure that it would work when we started onto this, but the more we go, the more we're liking this. So far, it's not cracking. It seems very hard and sturdy. And if, as long as we get enough moisture, it really seems to be making a really nice subfloor. These last two batches, we got a little muddier, uh, just kind of accidentally. And you can see they're, they visibly look different, and we're curious to see how that'll work out. We're working on this just a few hours at a time because it's pretty physically demanding. And in my spare time, I'm working on some other projects that we'll be showing you in our next video. We're moving into the very active portion of the monsoon season in this area, getting some beautiful thunderstorms at night. So we'll see how this affects our progress on the floor. We're sifting some dirt from the first earth pile, and as you can see, we've just about used it all up. We had originally made three earth piles around the house in preparation for this uh, last year when we had the backhoe, and we've just about used this first one up. This sifter seems to be just the perfect tool for the job. It's got an expanded metal face and about a quarter inch holes, and it seems to be just about the right amount of space. We really like the size of this sifter and the quality of the dirt that we're getting out of it. Throughout this process, April has been the one to add the water to the mixture and get it to that correct moisture content, which is actually fairly challenging, but she's kind of figured out how to do it. 
you know, we, at first we thought, well, maybe you could put a certain amount of water in or intuitively you'd think you could put a certain amount of water into it and do that exact same amount of water every time and it'll give you consistent results. But since we we're, we're having rains, it rains every other day, you know, the soil and the sand have varying moisture contents. And so, you know, your solids already have moisture in them and it varies wildly from day to day. And so you can't just put a fixed amount of water into it. You have to actually add it until it's right. And so what April looks for when she's adding water is the consistency of the dirt as it's tumbling in the mixer. It starts to form balls and gets to a certain, you know, she can just visually see when it gets to a certain consistency. And we found that to be the most reliable method. Sometimes we do get it a little bit too wet. And on this particular batch, you can see it's a little bit on the muddy side, which is okay. It seems to make a real, it seems to be really strong. That's not a, a problem, but it does create some issues because it doesn't compact as much as the other batches. So when we pile it up and get it ready to compact, we'll get it a little too high and then we have trouble compacting it down to the level of the other batches. It also gets pretty sticky and wants to stick to the bottom of the tamper. Well, we've used up that first dirt pile and so we're moving across to the other dirt pile on the other side of the house there and getting set up over there. So the mix that we started out using was one five gallon bucket of sifted soil, one five gallon bucket of mortar sand, and then one gallon of Portland cement. And when we started this second room, we decided to go ahead and change it up a little bit because we were a little bit worried of running out of mortar sand. We have a pile, we didn't want to have to buy more, and we were a little concerned about running out. So we decided to change the mixture to a seven gallons of soil and three gallons of sand and one gallon of Portland cement and see if that would work. So we did a couple test batches the first day on this room and they seemed to be working out fine. So we've changed our mixture over to that higher soil mixture and that seems to be working out fine. As far as coverage go, you can see here about how much it covers. I would guess that it's approximately a two foot by two foot square that we're able to do per batch. So four square feet at a depth of about three and a half inches. For these ramps, we just used some leftover pieces of OSB that we had laying around and they're working out great. I might also mention about the, you know, with the change that we did to the mixture, we were a little concerned that it would crack since, you know, theoretically we're adding more clay to the mixture. So cracking could be an issue, but we haven't seen that. We've done pretty much this, most of this room is, is done with the new mixture. And so far we haven't seen any cracking really whatsoever and it's compacting and, you know, working out nice, you know, even after a few days of drying or a day or two of drying, it, it looks, it looks great. So we really like this mix. And that completes this guest bedroom. It looks way better than the master bedroom. It's much more uniform, nice and level. When we built this barn, some were concerned that we'd have water running down the inside of the shipping containers due to the way the roof falls in the middle, but the gutters do a good job of taking that away and we get very little water coming down the inside. Next up was the living room, but before we could get started on the earthen floors in there, we had to finish up the radon system. I have the pipe all laid out here and I'm getting ready to drill a hole in the exterior wall. The radon system will actually exit the house right here and then Later on, we may take it up to the eaves or above the roof line, or we may not. Well, it remains to be seen. We could also put on a ventilation fan onto the pipe to kind of draw the air out. We're not sure how we'll finish up the project, but right here, we're just trying to get it through the house. Our exterior walls are really thick. They're a two by four wall construction, but on the outside of that is a thick layer of foam. And then on the outside of that, there's that metal layer. So in order to get through it all, I got a 12 inch long drill bit drilled a pilot hole through the entire wall with that and then used that pilot hole to guide my hole saw and then I came in from both sides with the hole saw but I had to come in from both sides in order to get all the way through the wall. The next thing I needed to do was to dig down in the gravel to create a, a space to put this pipe into. It needs to be sitting basically in the middle of the gravel layer in order to form a gathering system to collect that radon gas that might be present and take it outside. So radon gas is a gas that's harmful to human health that could be present and that could be coming up out of the ground and could possibly enter the house unless it has a way to escape. And so we don't know if we have radon here, but it is possible that there could be radon in this area. 
And, you know, if you do have radon buildup in the house, it's possible that it could cause lung cancer. So it's definitely something we don't want to have around. And so we're just trying to provide a way for that radon to escape the house just in case it's there. Now's the time while we're putting in the foundation to do it. You can see here, I'm actually, I've got it all glued together. I'm burying it and getting ready to tamp down the gravel and get it all smooth, smoothed out and tamped down. I also did tie this system into the system from the bedroom, so it's collecting gas from basically all over this portion of the house and then taking it outside. This, this gravel layer goes under the concrete too, so anything that comes up under the, underneath this house should be able to hit the vapor barrier and then migrate over to these pipes and then make their way out of the house. One more point about the radon system is it gives the subfloor a way to breathe and so it's it's a wave that moisture that might creep up from down below uh, it's a way that that moisture could escape one last point also you know we're not this isn't a professionally done radon system so it's just our homemade version after the radon system was in april went around with some bug spray that's a long-lasting indoor bug spray that works well next up with the layers we put in some heavy gauge plastic and then went in with some three quarter inch thick foam board we wanted the one inch but they only had the three quarter inch at the store and since we you know we just need a thermal barrier between the floor and the subfloor and so this ought to work fine and we're ready to get started on the earthen floor, just doing some sifting here and gathering it up. You can see the soil a little bit here. Part of it is like a really silty, sandy, and then part of it has some small chunks in it. You know, only a quarter inch because the, the sifter sifts out anything bigger than that. But we think those chunks are probably clay. We haven't done a lot of testing on the soil. We know it has a lot of clay. But it seemed kind of pointless to test because it varies between, you know, from bucketful to bucketful. It seems like it's quite a bit of variation in how much of those chunks it has, how much silt it has. We're trying to just get a fairly balanced mix in each five gallon bucket, but it's hard because the soil just varies so much. In general, the soil in this area does seem to compact very well. You know, we don't have to put gravel down on our roads or anything. It makes it makes great roads just all by itself. It seems to have a lot of, or at least some, caliche in it, which is kind of nature's cement. Anyway, it compacts well. It seems to be working really well for this floor. And here we are bringing in the first batch and getting started on the living room. This is the last room in the house to do so, but it's also the biggest. And so we know this will be a big task, but it's good to get started on it. This section of the living room that we're working in here will actually be where the office will be. There'll be a big desk right up against this concrete wall here, so working on the office portion. Well, this is going along good. We're finally starting to get into a rhythm with this. We really don't feel like we need to change the recipe anymore. It's working. We feel like we're getting good, consistent results. We're trying to err, if anything, on the side of a little bit more moisture then not enough. We, we know if there's not enough moisture, we'll definitely have problems. But, but if we do get too much moisture and it's muddy, we found from some of the other batches that it works out fine. It still doesn't crack. So this is working out well. Well, the weather forecast is calling for some big scary storms. So we decided to do a little trenching and kind of water management to get ready for those. Also, the garden is doing awesome. Well, we're getting back to the floors. We actually ended up taking a few days off. I must have pulled a muscle or something and for a few days didn't feel like doing floors, but we're ready to get back to it. We're just getting some of our prep work done here. We always like to get quite a bit of dirt sifted before we start, try to get ahead of the game there, get some sand ready, get everything all lined up and ready to go. And then we start mixing batches. April is adding the water. So this one's just about ready to take inside, dump it into the bucket, scrape out the remainder, take it inside and compact it down. You can get a look here at the previous work that we've done that's had a few days to sit, so it's dried some and it's looking really nice. It's not cracking, it's very hard, and so this seems to be working out well. We like how this is turning out, so we're just trying to basically copy and repeat. You can see April added some water to that cold joint there that where it joins the previous work that we'd done just to help it adhere to that previous layer that we'd put down. The cement that we're using for this project is some that we had ordered almost a year ago when we were planning to build an aircrete home, and we had a bunch left over. So we've been trying to use it up as we build our home here, and we're working our way down to the bottom of the pallet finally. But unfortunately, the stuff at the lower levels has been sitting. It's, you know, it's just been damp, and it's starting to get chunky and hard. So we've started sifting it to get the chunks out. 
This batch is about finished mixing and I'm just bringing it in, dumping it in, and April's starting to level it. It's funny here, she actually finds a frog in the dirt. It was a little frog that somehow survived the mixing process. And then I found another one when she took that outside to wash it off and save it. I found another one. They're both alive and seem to be fine. We took them outside and washed them off and let them loose over by one of our little trees. Uh, but the poor little guys somehow survived the whole mixing process. I think they must have been in the sand, which doesn't go through any type of a screen. Uh, but they survive being mixed with the concrete in the barrel. It's amazing. I'm glad they're okay. We see a lot of these little frogs this time of year. They've actually grown up from tadpoles that we've seen in our pond earlier in the year. So it's neat to see that cycle of life come full circle. You can see how green it is out here this time of year. Some of this grass is waist high. You would never think that a desert would be totally covered in waist high grass. It's a really cool time of year. I'm pouring this batch down and you can see a little bit the process that we do. April gets down and smooths it out. This is actually a really important step because we've got to get it about an inch higher than the other surface because we want it to tamp down and we want it, we know that it'll compress about an inch and we want it to be level when it's compressed, but not over compress it. We've, we've found in the past that if we get it too high and have to really hammer on it to tamp it down, that it wants to start cracking or it wants to crack out as it, as it expands. And so this has kind of been a fine art and something we perfected is, you know, getting it just the right height before we compact it. And then April goes around. She also compacts the edges and kind of finishes everything up before I bring in the next batch. It started raining, so we had to take an early lunch. So here it is at 74 degrees, 82% humidity. We're about to get back out there and see if we can get some more floors done today. Well, we got 11 batches done before lunch, so this is moving along really nicely. We're starting to get into a rhythm with this. We, we've got a system worked out so that we know what we're doing, and it's really satisfying work as you're laying this down, seeing the progress. It's really coming along quickly, actually. It doesn't seem like we started that long, and we're already, you know, closing in on halfway through the, the living room, which is the last room. So we feel like we're making great progress. Today's been a good day. We, we got quite done, quite a bit done before lunch and we still felt good and had nice weather. And so we're back to it after lunch here and just enjoying the process. It's really cool how this stuff compacts in. We really do like the compacted earth floor and how this is working out for us. We, we really feel like this is going to be a really great subfloor, I guess you'd call it, or a base for that top layer. It just feels really nice to walk on. It feels really solid. Like I say, it's not cracking, it doesn't abrade easy, it really seems like a nice surface. So this is working out for us. We, we have been putting a level on occasionally just to make sure it stays flat, or as close to flat as possible. I'm sure there's probably, you know, a good half inch variation in places, but generally keeping it pretty flat as we go across. This next batch that we're working on ended up being really muddy. As you can see, it was actually too wet to try to compact. It was already already muddy, so we just worked it in with the trowel. So, you know, instead of compacting this, April's just working it in. We have found that these batches that, that we accidentally get a little muddier seem to work just fine. They get really hard. I mean, this, this soil really gets hard you know, when it has that much water in it. And so it doesn't seem to be a problem. And we're just finishing up the last pour for this section. We're actually over halfway through the living room now, and we've, we're ready to put down some more layering before we move on. First, we needed to just get the area cleared out. So we had to move all of our ramps and ladders and all the various stuff that we had in there, clear out this space. And then I hadn't you know, compacted this gravel here, so I had to smooth it all out and compact this last section. So this is the last section of floor to compact and to do this too. So this is really exciting. You know, this is the last section of floor to prep like this. So we really feel like the end is in sight as far as this earthen floor goes. And we're just putting in the foam board now. We tape up the joints carefully, make sure to get that good seal. We took quite a bit of time with this, tried to fit everything in nice and tight. The next thing was to go ahead and move our sifter over. We've finished up that second pile of dirt and we're moving it over to the third and final pile of dirt. While we're at it, we just decided to go ahead and use the, what remained of the dirt pile, the second dirt pile, to make a little well for a tree. So we spent a little time on that. And then I'm also working on some other little side projects. Well, we're getting some of that forecasted heavy rain. April and I went out after it had slowed down a little bit and got completely soaked, but we went around and checked out all of our trenches and ditches 
and spent some time out there with shovels getting completely wet and slopping around in the mud, uh, but had a great time just directing the water flow. We're getting back to the earthen floors. It has been interesting, you know, doing this kind of relatively hard physical labor during the monsoon season here. It hasn't been terribly hot. You know, the overcast days do bring the temperature down some, but it's been incredibly wet, you know, or humid. It's just kind of indecently humid for this area. It's been 80 or 90 percent humidity, which is crazy humid for us. We're just not used to it. I know a lot of other people are, are probably much more used to it, but, you know, we're sweating like crazy. We're drinking a lot of water. Fortunately, it is overcast most of the time, which makes it bearable. One good thing about the weather is it is very favorable conditions for this floor drying, so it just keeps it from drying too fast with the higher humidity and moderate temperatures, so that's working out really well. We do try to minimize our use of the evaporative cooler during this time just because we don't want to dry out too fast, so we use that rather judiciously. We're working off of our third dirt pile now, and this dirt pile is actually on kind of opposite corner of the house as the sand pile. So I now have the maximum amount of distance to travel possible, basically, uh, to get this dirt to the central location. The, the mixer is kind of the central location, but anyway, I'm carrying the dirt quite a ways to get over to the mixer and then carrying the sand. Not quite as far, but there's a lot more walking and carrying buckets now that we're using that far dirt pile. I did consider using a hand cart or something to make the transportation of the dirt a little bit easier, but it just wasn't worth the trouble. It was easier just to pick up the five gallon bucket and walk it over. But it sure is nice having these ramps and using the wheelbarrow to get the dirt in place. I remember when I poured the concrete floors, I was actually transporting the cement in five gallon buckets to the areas where I was pouring it which made sense at the time. It was just, there was too many obstacles to get wheelbarrows over everything. So I ended up taking it all in by hand in buckets. And I'm, I'm glad I don't have to do this here. The wheelbarrow has been working out great to bring the finished product into the house. It's funny, sometimes, you know, looking at these videos, you know, in retrospect, there's easier ways that we could have done things. I have a tendency to just kind of get going. And once I get something that works, I just stick with it, even if it's not necessarily the easiest thing. You know, which probably wouldn't be great if you're doing this for, you know, week after week, month after month, but a lot of times I'm done within a few days or a week, and so it doesn't really matter if I'm not doing it the most efficient way. What really matters is, is getting it over with, getting it done. And so that's just kind of how I've done things. And so sometimes it, you know, you may look at this and like, man, they could have done that a whole lot easier. And you're, you're probably right. There's probably <laughs> ways that, that we could have made it easier, but, you know, by the time you figure all that out and change your process, you could have been done. So sometimes we just get it done and get it out of the way, even if it isn't the most efficient way. We were just finishing up this batch when we realized that it started raining pretty hard outside. So I went outside to grab the concrete, try to salvage it, keep it from getting all sopping wet. So I just put it in the wheelbarrow and brought that inside to protect it. The timing was actually pretty good here since we were just about to finish up for the day anyway. So once I got the concrete inside and protected, I went back outside to clean up the mixer. I have to clean it up after each use because we are using concrete in the mix. So I went outside to wash it off. April went over to check out the pond and see how it was doing. It's raining pretty decent out there and starting to fill up. After I finished cleaning up, April and I went for a walk out on the property in the rain. Nice little walk. We wanted to check out our ditches and see how they were doing. The reason we put these little side ditches in is because our, we were getting more water than our pond could handle. And so we wanted to direct the water to disperse out of over part of the land that didn't get just a ton of water. And therefore still keep the water on, on the land. And those ditches seem to be working out well. Part of the water is still going to the pond, but part is being directed out where it spreads out nice and evenly over the property. So it's August 23rd. We're going to do the final push today, see if we can get the floors done. We got rained out yesterday, so we'll see how this goes. Red found a rattlesnake in the junk pile over here, so now we're having to be extra careful Watch where we step. Things are getting pretty grown up, so I need to get out here and mow. I have mowed this a couple of times, but I need to get out and do it again. So here we are inside. We got all this done yesterday. And here's what we have left.
Well, we are closing in on this earthen floor completion. We're working on the last section in the living area here. This was quite a dreadable task when we first started out. You know, it was an unknown. We never did this. We weren't sure how it was going to turn out. It seemed like a whole lot of work and it was just something we were dreading quite a bit, but was really wanted to, to get done. We were looking forward to it being over with. It ended up taking us about 10 days, each day working between three to five hours. So, you know, not really too bad. This process has been interesting. You know, once we figured out, you know, the exact mixture that we were going to use and kind of got the water content thing figured out, it's really been smooth sailing from there. It's just a matter of putting in the work and doing batch after batch until it's complete. It really hasn't been that unpleasant. It's We've had fun working out here together, and it's been really satisfying seeing this go in. I can't tell you how wonderful it is to not see any more gravel in this house, to see that gravel completely disappear, and to see this earthen floor down is immensely satisfying. Satisfying. It's really nice to see. We will be putting on a top coat over this. It'll kind of level everything out and be all smooth and pretty. It'll be between an inch and a half an inch thick. While we've been working on these earthen floors, we've also been working on some other projects, mostly in the guest bathroom, and we've made a lot of progress in there. In our next video, we'll be showing you all the work that we've been doing in there, and we should be able to give you a look at the finished product.